<laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. All good. It's good. <laughs> yeah, awesome, man. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> You go, Michael. Okay, well, yeah. So I guess I'm I'm the newbie here. So hey, everyone, uh, Mikey, Mike, Mike here. So if you if you've seen my stuff online, I I kind of been sharing my aquariums for a long time on forums. Um, it goes all the way back to I guess nearly a decade ago. I was sharing online. If you think about how we used to communicate, it used to be on forums. Um, that's where I kind of got my inspiration of sharing my journey. Only in the past month or so have I gotten onto YouTube and it's been a great platform. It's been a really good space to have those conversations. And so I'm learning a lot at the same time, um, learning a lot from, from Devin and Lauren, of course. And it's, uh, it's been fun. It has been fun. So um, I got started simply because when I started my next reef aquarium, my wife was like, if this thing crashes, you're going to have nothing to show for it. So you may as well document the process because my last reef tank Unfortunately, after it was shut down, I had nothing left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. That's all right. Yeah. So um, look, I guess I guess what what we're here to discuss is um, why it's important to share your aquarium journey because one of the biggest things about this hobby is that it's not done in isolation. Like we might have our aquariums at home by ourselves, but if you think about it, the best part about this hobby is actually the community. And like I've met some of the greatest people through this hobby. For example, just the people that I hang out with daily or the people that I chat to daily are friends from this hobby because it's just one of those things that that draws people together whenever you find something you're passionate about and other passionate people are around you we kind of just like gravitate towards each other and so I think that's that's the greatest part um how's your journey been Lauren yeah good I think um I started um sharing on YouTube and stuff like that maybe about a year ago and or just over a year ago and I originally had discus and so I made don't go back and watch any of those videos because they are terrible I'm actually scared <laughs> to watch them because they were um, even worse editing than they are now um but anyway they um yeah I started um sharing with Jenny there and then um switched over to salt water and, and similar to Michael uh we're both doing canister filter setups and yeah. So I um, just wanted to share um, the journey going along and doing this tank behind me. That's a kind of feel to set up and share that with everyone and sort of show what's possible on a bit of a budget. So yeah, uh, that's how I got into it. Nice. So you guys are both rocking the canister filters, eh? Yeah, on this that's one. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, that's awesome. Okay, I think my audio is fixed. It looks a little hot, but I can see the bar is moving, so that's a good sign. Dun dun dun. So let's see if that works in the chat. Hopefully. So, so chat people, are we uh, are we all on, on audible and are we all can we all hear each other? Three for three. There's Devin. Now I'm really loud. Perfect. <laughs> all right, almost fixed. I know what the issue is. I just don't know why it is. And that's that's one of the fun things about this um, whole hobby is like all the stuff that happens behind the scenes when we're creating content. I guess you can kind of see it now. <laughs> no, it's live. not. <laughs> Yeah, it's not picture perfect. Like if you think about uh, whenever I film content or whenever I, I, I design something, it takes a long time for me just to, like hands up if you've had to shoot something six times just to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. some of the sign language, exactly. Some of my earlier videos, I was so critical on myself and I'd film it like 18 times until it was perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah, I fixed it now. 
my if anyone's technical and cares, I was using some software for noise cancellation from NVIDIA that uses the graphics card, and I just opened it. It wasn't uh, detecting my mic for some reason, so I just changed it back to my mixer. So we're back in business. But anyways. There, oh, there, you're so technical. <laughs> yeah, there, there is a lot of stuff that happens in the background, which is crazy. Like, you don't even realize it. Like, I've noticed now, like, I've gotten better at, like, one taking things or maybe a couple takes and not filming it ten times, which definitely helps. But it was so much work in the beginning, which, you know, there's times you ask yourself, it's like, why do I go through all this work and effort, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, we go through it for for the, the love of the hobby. We do this for for you out there. We do this for yep. um, the conversation. Um, I think back to those forum posts. Uh, I've learned so much uh, from forums. I've learned so much from YouTube videos, um, all those early videos that I used to watch. And I go... Man, this this content here that exists out there, it was created by someone who was passionate about the hobby. It was created by someone who obviously didn't get paid enough to do what they were doing. Uh, they they were just doing it out of the goodness of their own passion and heart yeah. for for the people. I thought that was great. So, um, if I've got something to share, if I've got something of value to add, then I hope uh, I could put that out there. I guess it's mm -hmm. that's that's what we do. We 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 want to share the things that we love. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's true. And th for me, I love projects. I love building things. I love the DIY. I kind of go in spurts on it lately. I, Lauren, I know you're, like, you're into the DIY too. I like it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just fun to just do different things like that and to share it. And then for me, a big thing that's come out of it is over time, like one, if you're a new reefer and you're putting stuff out there, you know, if you have an issue or something, all of a sudden all these people can give you feedback and help you. So, I mean, it is a tool that goes both ways. Um, yeah. But one of it, too, you do something cool, and a lot of people are like, oh, I built that. That's wicked. Thank you so much. And I had someone else, like, I did that video on the other day with, like, using the potassium to deal with, like, flatworms and stuff. And someone's like, that video is perfect. I just noticed him in my tank and da-da-da. So it's like, all that stuff kind of <laughs> helps. Like, now I feel guilty if I don't do a video. Like, I, I absolutely would feel guilty if I missed one now. Like, I'm so just, like, ingrained with I have to do it every week now and stuff. But it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's is it like for me? Oh, you go. <laughs> no, I'm the type of person as well. I like to um, learn, like, by uh, instead of reading the instructions, I'd rather look up a YouTube video and just see how it's done. <laughs> I'm a sort of learner. Like, yeah. I like that sort of thing. That's also why I think it's good to put it all out there because if anyone's similar like that and just likes to, yeah, look up a YouTube video on how to do things, then yeah. I do everything. It's like back yeah. in the day, like, this is probably like 10 years ago. But, like, early YouTube days, like, I bought this, like, ghetto used CDU for, like, 500 bucks, and I, like, rebuilt the engine on it, and I literally watched a YouTube video on rebuilding the engine. I was like, oh, this is what I do. Like, you can learn anything on there. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly. that's so true. So um, I'm going to say shout out to all of the YouTube creators on the Aquarium yeah. Hobby who have given thousands of hours of content out there. Um, we, we certainly appreciate what you've done. Uh, thanks to all the people in the forums as well and on Facebook and and those groups and the moderators, my goodness, there is just there's so many brains in this hobby <laughs> that I, I'm really appreciative of of all the people that exist out there that just contribute to the conversation. Um, one of the things that I also find as a benefit is whenever I'm starting up an aquarium, whenever I'm designing something, uh, sharing it with the the audience, even even at an early stage, um, helps motivate me. I think mm -hmm. that's that's one of the biggest things is when I. When I share something, it, it motivates me to join in that conversation, but also just to ensure that, hey, I'm, I'm holding myself accountable to this project. You know, there, there are people out there who want to see this thing through. <laughs> yeah. <you know>? so, <laughs> so that's for me like a little bit of motivation. Huh. It's not just this thing in the corner. It's like, wow, there is an invested audience here who, who <laughs> want to see this thing either either look amazing or go down in flames. You know, um, <laughs> I don't mind either way <laughs> as long as you're a part of the journey. That's a good yeah. point of using it as a way to hold yourself accountable. Like, I didn't overly think about that perspective, but it totally does. Like, guaranteed, I clean my glass more. I do other stuff to keep my tank looking good because I use in Quentin all the time, right? You don't want some yeah. shoddy-looking tank in there, so you're, you're going to give it more <laughs> love. And that is a whole other accountability side to it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I know. What do you think, Lauren? Is it keeping yeah. you accountable? Yeah, and I also like that you can go back and, you know, it, it documents it in a way that you can go back and go, oh, my gosh, it, looked like, it used to look like that, or, you know, just the growth side of things as well. I really like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, if it weren't for me taking a photo of it, like, who 
people do this, you know. I mean, I'm sure many of our audience members do this. We just take a random photo of like a coral polyp, you know, or, <laughs> yeah. or, or, a, or a stick that looks like this. And so I'm scrolling through my phone gallery, and it's, it's like, like all these little fingers everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, and and all of my all of my friends who are looking at my my picture gallery going, what the heck is going on here? But in in six months, I'll look back and I go, oh my goodness, that that little acro colony used to be this. Yeah, um, yeah. I would I would not have that comparison if it weren't for my my I guess necessity to to share those images online. So this is uh, true. that's that's definitely an advantage as well as record keeping. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. In- Instagram is half that for me. Like I'm terrible with coral names, so half of the times I'll like post corals so I can go back and remember what it's called later. Secrets. That's, yeah. that's a good one as well. Using it to, to catalog and, and yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you can go back and compare. You can, you know, what was the name of the, that scientific or the technical name? I'm just like, oh yeah, that one's cool looking. What is it called? I don't know. Like I have one that I'm like, oh, that's the one from the Tropic Marin bucket. I still don't remember the name of it. I have to go look at my Instagram post, figure out what it was. <laughs> Robusta. <laughs> ah, that's the one. See, exactly. Like I would never come up with that on my own. So that's it. So um, I, I just want to throw this on you, Devin. How did you kind of get started? Because you're one of the OG, um, I guess, YouTubers out there that I used to watch years ago, and and I guess you're a part of the the old school school crew, and. Uh, yeah, I really look up to you and the things that you've thank done. You. So, so how did you get started in all of this? Thank you, thank you. It's a good question, actually. So before, like, I've always been into DIY stuff. And when I was younger, I had aquariums, and they kind of went away. And then my wife, girlfriend at the time, had this old tank she had in storage. I was like, oh, I used to have a tank. I'm like, what are you doing with that? And I acquired it from her. And it turned into, like, a little tank. And then it turned into a bigger tank. And then it turned to a planted tank. And then I was like fully down obsessed with like the planted tanks for a while. So I had all these little dinky planted scape tanks everywhere, um, which was fine. And I got into like green little crystal shrimp. And then the like the saltwater lure was starting to like suck me in. <laughs> and the funny thing is back then, because like even in the planted tank days, like I don't even know if dosers existed then, but I built my own doser with like a Arduino and little things to dose all the fertilizers for the plants. And like I was already trying to automate things for the planted wow. tank. <laughs> so when I bridged, and I already had like CO2 for my main tank, like it, so a lot of the stuff bridged over to salt water really easy. And one thing that still makes me laugh is with the, what you call it? As I like a chiropractor one time, I was talking to the girl and she's like, oh, I used to have a salt water tank. Uh, so we got all excited and we're talking and she's like, but they're so hard. I'm like, no. <laughs> so I'm like, how hard could it be? So anyway, so I just jumped all in and converted one of my fresh tanks to salt water and then, became more Little and more addicted you know. yeah it created a monster <laughs> look at me now uh but then i started neglecting the planted tanks and eventually i just went all salt water so mm-hmm. and then, that's the way it goes yeah and then, then the content <laughs> side yeah i don't know I, I made some random videos and then i was like oh, this could be kind of fun i'm gonna do it and then i just decided one day i'm just gonna like commit to it and then just started making myself do weekly videos and i've been like five or six years now it's crazy i've just doing videos every single week Chill. So if you had to calculate the hours of content that you've made and, and the time that you put into it. Oh my gosh. Uh, what was that what would that be? <laughs> Ridiculous amounts. Just out of curiosity. Quick shout out, great bearded reef. Ten dollars super chat, thank you so much. What's up, all my reefers? Love <laughs> love coming from Boston Reef Society. Much love. And Chili Wheels Reef, thank you as well. Okay, I, I'm actually gonna look now because I'm curious to see. If yeah, it tells it's... me how many minutes of content, which is ridiculous, like it really. And is I guess, uh, Lauren, how, how long does it? How, how long have you sort of like been doing this, and how how much effort have you put into it? Because it's it's clearly not a, a simple thing that happens, despite your channel being simple aquariums. There's, nice. there's a lot of complexity <laughs> behind the scenes, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, as we were saying before, it takes a lot of takes for me to, you know, get actually the words out that I'm trying to say sometimes. So. <laughs> Um, it does take a little while, um, you know, just, you know, trying to get the actual sentence out sometimes, but I guess, I don't know, I'm really basic. I still, yeah, as I was saying before, use iMovie and stuff like that to edit. So it's all very basic. I used it for years. Nope. It's all good. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I try to keep it, I know, as simple as possible, but (laughs) even with my editing and everything. So, yeah, I'll definitely... Um, try and improve it um, bit by bit, but yeah, I just um, yeah, I reckon it 
yeah, probably a couple of hours a week, maybe. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess as a gauge for, for those of you who are wondering out there, um, my videos tend to last for around about 10 to 13 ish minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, for yeah. those 10 minutes, it takes me roughly about an hour solid of filming uh, just to kind of get that content right. Um, I kind of get the angles right. Or usually it's like my dog barks in the background or, or you know, um, a car drives by and goes beep, 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 or, or like the microwave goes off in the background. So I have to do that shot again. Mm -hmm. uh, then it takes me roughly around about an hour-ish to edit and process it on my very slow phone. Uh, it just takes forever to render the, the video footage itself. Uh, then it takes around about half an hour to actually prepare the content on the YouTube platform itself and around about 15 to 20 minutes to make the thumbnail. So for people who see 10 minutes worth of content, um, you got to realize there's been roughly around about, I guess, three hours of work. You're way more efficient into... than me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's for me. And I do it simply, you know, I... I mean, I look at Devin's stuff, I look at Sam's stuff, I look at Lauren's stuff, I look at all the people out there that, that do these crazy, uh, like, multiple shots and, and, and cinematic videos as well. And I can't imagine how much time and effort and editing goes into that. So my, my big appreciation to, to all these creators for doing that. Um, yeah. It really shows I'm starting to learn. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah, I, I'm way more than that. I probably spend probably eight to ten hours a week, probably. Wow. Or, yeah, easily. Like, easily a few hours worth of editing and, you know, a couple hours for the project. I mean, some projects are, you know, not a couple hours, right? Some some videos, like, tank updates are the easiest, to be honest, because I can just talk about my tank and just, like, roll it off. Where if I'm doing, like, a project, right, if you got to go get parts, so you got to do stuff, and then you know, go film it, go do this. Okay. Oh, I need this part. Go do that. Yeah. Like, you know, and if it's, you know, no one's going to sit there for four hours watching a video. So then you got to cut it down. I'm like, okay, they don't need to see me drilling a hole for four minutes, right? Five seconds of it's enough to tell the story of that part of it. <laughs> so yeah. it, it is crazy how much it goes into it. But yeah, I'm going to say eight to 10 hours a week is probably like my average and about a couple hours. That's probably editing. Yeah. So, so not to turn people off of YouTube creating. <laughs> it's a good thing to put content. <laughs> you don't have yeah, to be this hardcore. Good, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to be hardcore. Like I started off with with my videos as just one takes, like one shot. Um, obviously, you. I've seen so many channels that I follow as well. That's just like, dude and a camera, and they're just yeah. like filming their tank. And that that to me is content that I enjoy as well. So mm -hmm. you can go as complex as you want on like the full high production side of things like sea friendly roof or you can go on like the the low tech uh, side of things and just have your camera and your tank and and that's it you don't need any equipment you can just film it straight off your phone and, and that's great um i appreciate yeah. that just as much 100 yeah. percent. cell phones all you need like you do not need fancy cameras you know if you're gonna buy anything spend the 20 30 bucks on a decent mic because good audio is important but as yeah. long as you have decent lighting, <laughs> cell phone camera is more than enough. Like some of my stuff, I film with a cell phone phone, like lugging out the big camera. So 100%. Mm. Um, and I guess you know, people don't realize that um, you know, there's all this effort that goes into it. There's there's obviously a lot of benefits as well to doing this. Like there's there's a couple of perks to, to obviously creating content for the world to see. Um, personally, um, obviously, as a person who shares products, as a person who shares ideas, um, I get approached by, by companies. Um, I'm guessing you two do as well. I guess, uh, Devin, why don't you share your experience with that? I get random emails all the time. Um, <laughs> there, there's a bazillion different China products I get offered almost weekly. It's crazy how much, but I, I'm very picky on stuff that I do. Um, mm. Especially like, and I'm not going to do a video just because someone sent me something. It's, I have to like, like the product or think it's decent. I, I'm not really one to be like, oh, this product sucks, blah, blah, blah. Like, to me, it's just like there's no point, like, saying bad things about a company. You know, maybe yeah. it's some people have the perspective if I'm like, oh, this this is like a terrible knife, don't buy it, blah, 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 right? Like, I don't really want to put a company <laughs> down. I'd rather just not do anything on it. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm more, this is like my hobby job, right? So to me, I do it because I have fun. I enjoy it. So I'm not really going to be putting out negative content that I don't enjoy. I'd rather do stuff that's fun and makes me happy because yeah. it's a lot of effort. So yeah. do what makes you happy, right? That, that's kind of my perspective on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, like, I would never 
do content if I don't think something's good. I mean, if it's in the middle, like I'm always straight up 100% honest. Like I think that's like hugely important because if you mislead people, then they're not going to trust you in the future, right? So you always have to be straight up and up front and be authentic. And I think that's like a huge part of it. Yeah. Do you? How about you guys? <laughs> what do you yeah, got? I totally, I totally agree. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm still very new into the, you know, um, being offered products and stuff like that um, sort of situation. But I totally agree. And um, yeah, you definitely want to be, um, you know, careful with, you know, which sort of products you take on or, you know, um, it definitely, you want to be able to believe in what you're promoting and not just promote it for the sake of being given it for free. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's why I agree with that. And Michael? <laughs> yeah, well, I guess um, I want to firstly clear this one up. Uh, when, whenever companies, I guess, speak to us, um, I've never, ever engaged in a conversation where the the, the person, the, the you know, the CEO or the, the social media team say to me, hey, Michael, uh, we want you to say this. You must say this. Never. Um, yeah. <laughs> never. Um, they've never paid me a single dollar. And in actual fact, all the things that I've shown in my videos so far, mm -hmm. um, that's stuff that I've bought, like with my own money. You know, like mm. every single Aquaforest product that I put out there, um, you know, hashtag not sponsored, right? It's it's <laughs> just for me, like I, I, I've been using it for years. I love it. I, I want to share the things that I love. Like mm -hmm. my canister filter, the Oase filter, not sponsored by them, but I believe in the product and I, I want to share that. And so, of course, there are companies that will come along and say, hey, Michael, you know, um, why don't you just try this? And if I believe in it, then I'll put it out there. If it's something that I don't believe in, um, then I think it's it's something that I'll say, I'm sorry, I can't, you know, I can't give you the, the thing that you are, are wanting. And so that's that's something that, that personally resonates with me when I hear you talking about that, Devin. Mm -hmm. um, there's also, I guess, this stigma that people have about, you know, companies and, and content producers. And I just want to sort of clear that air because at the end of the day, um, all the things that we take as, as products uh, to, to share with the audience, or, and I'm guessing you do this way more, Devin, is it's it's out of research, it's out of sharing knowledge, it's out of doing the testing so that other people don't have to do that testing as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've bought so many things that I knew were a waste of money. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I've got this sort of like a, this this theory that, you know, the, the, the cheap guy, <laughs> the cheap guy who, who goes for like the bottom of the rung ends up paying twice. Yeah, um, that's, you know, that's, that's for me, at least, um, you know, so I've got stacks of lights. <laughs> I started <laughs> they just, there. They just don't work. <laughs> my, my original reflights were DIY, soldered my own LEDs <laughs> on some old heat sink I took out of an app, and then I upgraded to, like, the China lights, and then I slowly, <laughs> I upgraded, like, 10 times, right? And, like, I rock radions now, and I love them, but how many mm -hmm. lights did I buy before it? If I would have bought them in the first place, you know, I would have yeah. saved a fortune, but at the same time, I'm a brand new hobbyist, I'm not going to drop a grand on lighting. So it took That's a while it. to get there, but yeah. and there's there's a place for that. <laughs> yeah, it's so like retrospect. Yeah. If I would have bought them in the first place, it would have saved money instead of buying, yes. and selling, buying, and selling, buying. And selling. I don't know. It's a trade off, but it, it's hard to spend money up front if you don't know if it's for you. You don't know how addicted you're going to be, and yeah. it's like a, it's a rabbit hole, right? Yeah, it is. I'm at spot at the moment because a lot of the stuff that I've got on my tank is really cheap stuff, um, like. $40 wave makers and stuff like that that have just like suction caps have just come off now and so I'm in that <laughs> section right now where I'm like okay I probably need to upgrade <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's just blowing it's, sand over your tank <laughs> yeah probably mm -hmm. wouldn't um you know for a lot of people they wouldn't even start in the hobby if they didn't have thousands of dollars to um you know spend on equipment and stuff like that so it can totally be doable on ch cheaper equipment but it's right you're going to be upgrading hey. when the such go and you know all that sort of stuff my first saltwater tank was uh which i'm gonna call it um fluval edge the little like qb floating one. ah yes the, the 12 gallon filter. one that's yeah, it i had yeah. a hub filter hang on the back aqua clear with some carbon in it and i changed my yeah. own little diy lighting to make it more bluey for salt water and that's it all I did, that was our first all road tank. So you don't need fancy. Like, it's obviously yeah. nice to have, but. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's that's where it was. Lauren's philosophy and my philosophy kind mm -hmm. of merged in the beginning. And, and I guess where it is now as well. Um, mm -hmm. There's yeah. this idea that, you know, so I surveyed on Facebook, you know, like, show me a $20,000 aquarium. 
And, yeah. and I saw all of these setups and I go, wow, they're amazing, but they're 20K. And then I said, you show me your sub 10K aquariums. And I go, wow, there's some really amazing ones there too. Mm -hmm. So I guess I wanted to demystify, um, you know, the whole concept of all the gear, all the time, uh, all the money, you know, and, and a lot of people do that. They go into this hobby and they buy all the gear. And I just wanted to show a simple setup mm -hmm. that was easy to achieve for anyone who wanted to get into reefing. Uh, so that, that for me, I guess, is, is value adding to the community. I want people to at least yeah. uh, have something that they can walk away from and go, oh, that's an alternative way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, a big, big shout out again to all the people that do those product reviews so we don't have to do all the research and spend thousands ourselves just to arrive at that conclusion. The, the simplest tank I've ever seen was a sunlit tank on someone's work desk yeah. that was literally just Xenia. It was like this, like rectangly clear tank with just a Xenia and a power head. That was it. It was literally in my, I don't even remember if I had a heater. It's like a heater powder. That's it. Simplest tank it's ever. And literally just probably hardly like. ever did water changes on it. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, that's it. So. And that's what I, I'm t oh, sorry. No, go for it. I like about, um, you know, everyone that's, you know, putting content out there and, you know, YouTube channels is, um, it, I really like the creativity of everyone's minds, you know, going, oh, you know, you could do it this way. And that's, I really love the community, how there's, um, you know, there's obviously, you know, not every single tank is going to be exactly the same. Um, there's no guide, 100%, every single person can get this guide. <laughs> this is how you're meant to run your reef tank. You know, everyone's tank's different, light's different. And so that's what it's, that's why I think it's important for people to share their journeys, you know, so, um, you know, other people can go, oh, you know, I've got that happening too, or, you know, um, share the good and the bad, you know, um, cause it doesn't always run, you know, um, perfectly, um, to the book, you know, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's well, what I like about content creators. Yeah. You, you almost learn more from dealing with the bad than the good, right? So there's yeah. a lot of lessons that can become, and if you prevent someone else from dealing with the bad, then I think you're doing like yeah. an awesome part for the hobby. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Um, I just want to you know, put this one out to the audience as well. You know, if you're if you're there in the comments section, um, welcome <laughs> again as well. It's, it's good to have you here. Um, what, what sort of content do you like to see from YouTubers? You know, are you more of the, the I watch cinematic videos or I like to sit down and relax and or I like to follow a, a vlog style uh, discussion or I like those really technical videos that break down the part into screws and, and bolts and mm -hmm. um, yeah what, what sort of content do you appreciate out there I think that's um that's I'd like question. to hear the community <laughs> feedback on that you know um, I guess Devin what sort of content do you consume then if, if you're watching the YouTube random just random I'm all, I'm all over the map I mean half my channels are like techie related ones too and then the other chunks like it's like reefing or like IT techie stuff is like majority of it but um yeah, no, I, I watch a mix. Like, if I have lots, like, I, I do like the cinematic stuff too. Like, if I have lots of free time, I'll be more inclined to do that stuff. Lately, I've been crazy busy, so I've been not as fancy with it. So it kind of depends. Um, but I think, you know, you're going to have different audience. Like, some people want that, you know, very detailed how to video, and some people just want to be entertained, right? And some people want to learn something. Some people are coming to YouTube because they need to know how to solve some issue they're dealing with their tank. So I, I personally just try and mix it up just because it keeps it more interesting for me to create different types of content all the time. Nice. So it's a blend. But yeah, I'm sure you're probably better off if you target certain ones, but I don't know. To me, it's a hobby job, right? So you got to have fun with it. It can't just be yeah. one thing or not. Yeah, you got to mix it up. That's it. Yeah. What about you, Lauren? <laughs> yeah, I watch like and all sorts, really. And, um, you know, I'm fairly new to the saltwater hobby as well. Like, it's been probably just over a year that I've actually been into saltwater. So I've watched all sorts from, like, you know, um, how to keep tangs and, you know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, just starting from the very, very basic and stuff like, um, yeah, sort of videos. So um, to, you know, watching people's, you know, amazing reef tanks, cinematic stuff as well. So, yeah, a yeah. very big range. Stuff, um, that I've watched throughout the year as well. So, yeah. What about you? You probably. Um, for me, I started off with um, producing that sort of cinematic style content only because I didn't yeah. want my face on the camera. Uh, so, 
and and I really do appreciate that. I think there's a real art to it um, that that I honestly haven't figured out. But it's it's one of those things that for me, the hobby is both technical, it's artistic, it's communal. Mm -hmm. uh, there's personalities behind it as well. So yeah, I'll consume the cinematic content. I love following. Uh, people's like vlog journeys as well and, and how they kind of go through their reefs and I, I, re I really want to put it out there to all the people out there that are really honest about their tanks as well and they're like oh look at this little a can that's melting away or or my poor fish jumped out you know like things like that i really appreciate that content as well but um, when i first started it was all of the educational content mm -hmm. that I, I i really gravitated towards so um, i find the greatest value in that because that's the stuff that exists out there on youtube for for the masters you know yeah. if anyone hops onto youtube for the first time going how do i set up my lights or how do i set up my my scheduling on dosing or how do i do all these things that's how i learned um, mm -hmm. so yeah. I, I definitely yeah. appreciate that i think you're right i want to sort of add my channel mm -hmm. uh, over time i want to create more of that mixture of content mm -hmm. as well that's the direction that i'll probably head in yeah i do yeah. agree on the education like that's one of my goals of basically everything I put out is either to teach something and, you know, if you can make it fun and entertaining, that's even better, right? Because people come to your channel to learn something, whatever they're, they're seeking answers to, but they're going to stay if they like you and what you do, right? That's so it. I think yeah. it is a blend. And like when you're saying too, like you never used to be in front of the camera, well, you still have a ton, but I think adding that personality into it is what will keep people coming back to your channel as well. So I That's think true. I do feel like it is important because it adds a personal connection rather than just a voice in the background. Food for thought. Yeah, which which leads me on to this. Like, uh, you know, I want to say thank you to all of the the people out there that that have subscribed to us. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's it's. <laughs> I would not do this if it weren't for all the subscribers. So you know, from all three of us, definitely a big thanks to all of you. Um, and if if you're on one of our channels and you're watching this now, like hop onto Devin's channel, hop onto Lauren's channel. You know, um, hit that subscribe button there because it, it really helps a couple of things. Like for me personally, um, it lets me know that there's a, an active audience for me to continue making the content. Um, the second thing it helps is, of course, it helps us to promote the videos through the YouTube algorithm. Like the YouTube algorithm will really destroy us if you're watching our content and not subscribing because it kind of just puts us into the sort of nether regions of YouTube. So. As soon as someone hits subscribe or they comment um, that that or thumbs up, then that really, really helps us out. So I think if you're watching and you're not that type of person who who subscribes or you're not that type of person who normally leaves a thumbs up or a comment, just do it. Just write anything like you could literally go in the comment section and write <laughs> anything and, and it will just give us a boost. Um, why is that important? It's because we love this hobby so much. Uh, it's good that if you enjoyed the video and you would like other people to see that video as well, uh, then that's that's 100% the case. And I'm going to tell you this up front. Uh, the, the three hours that I put into making uh, a 10-minute video uh, earns me on YouTube like zilch, like not enough. It's like way less than minimum wage. Yeah. So if you think <laughs> about it, you know, we're not doing this for the cash money, Lambo money. <laughs> no, I, I would be bet, better off just working and buying yeah, and, and I would, doing stuff. Yeah, I would be better off and... flipping burgers. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. But it's yeah. funny that you say about the subscribe thing, because I just looked at mine. 46% of my views were in the last month were subscribers, 54% not subscribed. So, yeah, it's true. Like, most people don't subscribe, but they'll still come and watch it. So, hit the button. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Before this scrolls away, Taylor King, thank you for the $5 super chat. Everyone starts with a different budget and a different time. Budget reefers are needed to continue to expand the hobby, 100%. And we all start there. Everybody does, right? So, yeah, 100%. I mean, I like fancy, but I also love building things and DIYing things. So I'm both budget. Like, on my big tank, I was going to buy a calc reactor, and I was just like, I could build one. I got enough stuff around here, and I just, like, that turned into my video, and I just built it that day. And it's fun. Cost me yeah. nothing. Win-win. Yeah, that's yeah. It. that's it. Getting out of making making do with what I've got and so, sort of making something out of what I've got on hand as right? well. Um, yeah, it's cool. Necessity is the mother of invention. How can I accomplish this? What do I got around the house so it'll work for this task, right? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so we're, 
we're partially encouraging people to share their reefs, share their content. You know, it could be on a forum, it could be YouTube. Instagram's a popular one because it's easy. I mean, obviously there's a lot more effort going into YouTube content. Instagram's pretty much just wing it and shoot it or snap a photo. So that one's pretty easy. <laughs> now, I saw a post about this somewhere and I'm curious to hear your thoughts. It was basically around, do you consider like the whole Insta reef thing? Like, is it setting, cause you know, people have these like perfect shots. So they're like amazing reef. Is it inspirational to try and get that? Or is it setting unreal <laughs> expectations where they're always trying to like do better? Like, oh, my reef is not as nice as that one. Or is it like, yeah, that one's awesome. I'm gonna do it. Like, what do you, what do you think about that perspective on it? Uh, shall I start on that one? <laughs> Go yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so um, I, I guess you know, I I don't know. I I'm, I'm kind of self aware of this, but you know, my mm -hmm. tank, um, I think is good looking. Yeah, it's pretty pristine. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, so I guess whenever I see those articles, um, I think I think Jake Adams, um, on on his website Reef Builders, mm -hmm. um, wrote an article. Maybe it wasn't Jake; it was someone else, uh, one of his contributors. They wrote like, oh, um, Instagram reefing is like kind of like the 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 fashion yeah, that magazine equivalent. And and so, I, I'm, you know, I was just thinking out there about that. And I go, um, I wanted to reply to that personally mm -hmm. because I think a lot of people don't realize wh whether it's a, 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 an aquarium creator or whether it's a model or whether it's, it's someone who, you know, builds cars for a living. Uh, to get to that result takes hours and hours and hours of effort. Um, so the way I see it is I hope to at least be somewhat aspirational mm -hmm. for people. You know, when, I, when people see a successful aquarium, it should inspire them. Uh, it may not necessarily be 100% realistic. You mm -hmm. know, at the end of the day, like not everyone is going to clean their glass every second day or not everyone is going to, you know, trim their little acros like bonsais just to get the perfect shape. Yeah. But I do hope that there's someone out there that looks at this for the first time ever and goes, whoa, I want to do that. Because that's what got me into the hobby. When I looked at the works of Takashi Amano, mm -hmm. um, those amazing aquariums, that was like a million, a million percent higher than anything that I could have achieved when mm -hmm. I first started. But it gave me a goal to get to. It gave me a, a piece of inspiration to say, I want to obtain that. So I guess um, to all the people that create beautiful aquariums, keep doing that and keep sharing it. I think that's that's amazing. Um, to all the people who who create normal aquariums or aquariums that you personally enjoy, mm -hmm. um, keep doing that and sharing that as well because we do this for us at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. so my tank looks the way it is because I want it to look that way, not because Instagram wants it to look that way or YouTube wants it to look that way. I, I mean, my tank looked the way it is privately in my home before I shared it with the world. So mm -hmm. that, that for me was, um, I guess, my way of looking at this. I, I don't want people to be sort of thinking, oh, you know, Michael's just doing this for the gram. Because if you look at my Instagram, there's like four pictures of this. <laughs> <laughs> Slacker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you call yourself a content creator. <laughs> yeah. That's, I, I, I do this for me. You know, I do yeah. this for me. Um, and then I share it with the world because I love the hobby and people mm -hmm. appreciate it as well. Um, there's, there's no, there's no makeup happening to this aquarium. <laughs> like what you see is what you get, you know? Yes. I, I take a good photo because I guess I appreciate good photography. That's, yeah. that's another thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You I, I agree with that. And I like most of the time, the community on Instagram, like most of the time, the community in the reefing hobby, um, as a whole, uh, just awesome people, and it's just great to be able to be people, even to watch, you know, people's journeys on Instagram and like uh, see them getting, you know, their photos better. And you know, it's just nice to be able to have that community and encouragement of each other. Um, so yeah, I, I really like that side of things, at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. I've I've made crazy like how many friends I've made from just doing this and just meeting people yeah. through the hobby. Like, most of my friends are, like, reef geeks now, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Or we convert them. I don't know about you, but I have friends come yeah. over. And, I want a tank now. I'm like, right, we're getting a tank. Mission accomplished. <laughs> like, the next like day, you're already like, here, here's a starter tank. Here's this. Yeah. Let's get them hooked yeah, before literally. they can change their mind. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And when yeah. that happens, my goodness, my brain just explodes. I'm like, okay, you got to like something yeah. just lights up inside of me, and I'm like, yeah. yeah, all right, let's let's get started all this because I guess one of the things I also appreciate is I like watching those beginner videos as well where people start from the beginning because it, it reminds me of, of where I was as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's there's something nice. You're right, Lauren, about watching people's aquariums progress. Um, you know, so definitely support those those content creators out there that are just putting it out there from the beginning. As well, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people out there that have these little mini channels that only have you know 500 ish subscribers or something like that. You know, join in on their conversation. That's going to help them to to be encouraged, help them to obviously continue to create content as well for an audience. And um, you might get a little bit of advice, or you might get some nostalgia from that as well. I think that's always nice to to, to watch as well. Yeah, definitely. Totally. What I like to do sometimes is I'll just like randomly go through comments in my videos and go check out their channels and watch their videos. Yeah. And then you can find some cool yeah. stuff, right? Which is awesome. Yeah. 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 I was just going, oh my gosh, I'm like, here I am, someone's channel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I guess speaking of comments, um, one of the things I do love is, is the comment section of YouTube. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's like one of my sort of like most favorite places to be but also sometimes the most cringiest place to be as well <laughs> um, I, I kind of mentioned this in my previous video but the one thing that I love about this hobby is the diversity of of thought mm. and opinions um, and, and my goodness do people have opinions right so uh, if, if you're watching a video definitely put out your ideas out there definitely comment as well um, one of the things I want to say um, to, to anyone who's watching here is um, you know hashtag be nice <laughs> okay, okay like, this is this is another interesting rabbit hole quick shout out jeff johnson thank you sir has been a while what is up and thank you for the super chat thank you as well jay's role much appreciated okay <laughs> be nice is a big thing because they're this the the dark side of putting out content is there's trolls there's mm. haters and it is part of it right you'll get people that are just gonna say stupid things regardless and, you know, at first it would really bug me. And now I'm just like, ah, that means you made it when you start getting haters now. So it's like, yeah, victory. But um, it, it is perspective, right? And that is one, I guess, downfall to putting out content is having to deal with stuff like that. Have yes. you guys had it? Do you have much of it or not really? It's been pretty good. Um, a little bit. Like yep. not, to, yeah. I don't know. I feel I feel like it's been pretty tame so far. I'm like bracing myself. That's good. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. It's okay. Uh, for me personally, um, I guess the points I put out there aren't really controversial. You know, I'm not doing like political YouTube videos here. Let's mm -hmm. let's be honest. You know, so like I'm so glad that we have the most neutral hobby <laughs> that exists out there that's not politicized. You would yeah. think, right? But. You know, there still is drama for some reason. I don't know why there it, is, you know? but there is. There it's is. Out you there. Know, people, I, I was thinking about this the other day, and I'm thinking, mm -hmm. like, you know, when, whenever we put an opinion out there or a thought out there, uh, when, when someone sets up their system or they use a particular product or they go for a particular method, they personally have invested into that method or that product. And so they, they've internally decided, oh, that is... My, the best way that I think things should be done. Mm -hmm. And so when someone presents an alternative viewpoint or an alternative method, it kind of subconsciously interrogates. And, and I guess to some extent, if the person is defensive, mm -hmm. they might go, oh, you're attacking the way I'm doing things. You know, mm -hmm. so um, that's when you see certain negative comments that kind of pop up and people go like, oh, this is the worst way ever. And, and you know, I hate this. And... Uh, I, I think this is definitely going to fail in, in, you know, like, watch it, watch it. But you're like, but it worked for yeah, me. I should be. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to die. So, yeah. the thing that I love about this hobby and I find it interesting is, like, when people are like, ah, oh, this way, no, this way, no, this way, the odds are they both work. Like, that's the cool thing yes. about this hobby is there is a hundred different ways to do it. There isn't one or two, right? There's so many that's ways it. to do it. And, like, no one is truly an expert because no one's ever going to know anything because we are constantly learning in this hobby, like every week. And, and I think that's what attracts a lot of people to it is that like mm. never ending challenge. Like, yeah, you can get easier for you, but you're never going to know it all. Right. It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. There's also like, um, you know, I guess I'm going to call it out right now as well. Um, if there's, there's some people out there that are like what I call the thumbs down, like, like mob. Yep. There's like maybe like, and there's not, not many of them. There's only like two or three of them. But like as soon as a video goes out, it's like, do it. You know, yeah. you have about five or six. And Consistently, I'm sure there's just some, 
some very sour individuals that exist out there. So, you know, if, if, if you're not one of those sour people, that's like all everyone else, like 99.9% of the viewership. Thank you. Like, seriously, and, you are what keeps us going. And for the sour people, thank you for taking time to interact with the video. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it as well. <laughs> I know, it's so funny. yeah, you're gonna get that when you create content. There's just gonna be some really, really, you know, I guess people who have have some sort of agenda in the background to hit dislike. So how can we combat this? If you're watching this video, obviously hit that thumbs up. Um, you know, we're gonna try and out ratio all those people. Let's let's get it like a thousand to one. And I think at the end of the day, um, that's gonna keep some positivity in the hobby. I think you know we could use every single bit of positivity out there. Uh, the, the hobby itself on the forums, the way that I see it, it, have you ever seen a discussion just like melt down into a complete argument, uh, you know, over opinions? And I guess that for me yeah. is is kind of the, the icky, yucky side of things. I'm yeah. all for it. I'm all for, for discourse. But when it gets down to like, oh, personal attacks, that's when I go, oh, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I, I love a good debate. I, I find it fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nick, thanks for the super chat. Whack a troll friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but like the one thing I always makes me laugh because I tell people all the time is like, this is a hobby. We do it for fun. And like okay. some people are so like brand affinity and like bring in the battle. Yeah. Like Rick, you mentioned a brand. Yeah. It's like they're both probably going to grow coral. Like buy what you want. Or like the other <laughs> thing that always gets me is like when people are like, they're like so anti something because it's expensive. But I'm like, if it's yes. expensive, you think just don't buy it. Like, I don't know. I always feel yeah. like I'm like, damn, BMWs are too much money. I'm not going to buy one. Like, I'm not going to go around saying that. I just don't have one. Like, I don't know. Some of these those, things Those Lamborghinis, man, they're so yeah. expensive. Damn like, them. <laughs> How dare they have expensive cars? I don't know. So, some of these, like, random arguments I see, I just laugh. I'm like, what is the purpose of this? Just, like, it's a hobby. Have fun. Enjoy it. Like, yeah. grow coral and make awesome reef tanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, brand ambassadors. Yeah, I don't know. I I will never be like pushy on anything like that. It's just not my style. I don't get it. Mm. So okay. So how do you feel with the word influencer? Since everyone seems to call that now. Um, what is your feeling? All right, uh, influencers. Let me, yeah. I, I don't really like the term yeah, because I, I personally, I I don't have influence over what you think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. At the end of the day, like I, I put my ideas out there. I have an audience. That's great. Um, you know, people people do look towards success. So at the end of the day, you know, if you're putting out something successful, if you're putting out something that works, then that's great. And people are most likely going to find the path of that. Um, mm -hmm. But I think there's this whole sort of misconception out there that these influencers or content creators are just doing it for the gram or doing it for the money or doing it for the freebies. And that's, that's not the case. I think um, the way I see it is this, uh, when, uh, when I set up something that's successful, uh, I share it with the world. I'm adding value to the community. If, if a brand or if a, a company or if a person has a product that they think, Hey, Michael, um, why don't you try this? I think it would be good for your system. Mm -hmm. Then I'll say, you know what? Um, yeah, go ahead, throw it my way and I'll have a look at it and I'll give it a go. Like, for example, you know, I've, I'm trying currently a couple of products that I think will probably be amazing to help out reefers. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, whenever I create something or share something, it's usually for the benefit of knowledge in the community. Yeah. It's not for some sort of like personal gain of like, ha ha, look at me and my you know, five dollar fish food that I score for free. You know, it's like <laughs> I know that it makes me laugh too. You're like, it's like, yeah, yeah. I just spent eight hours for like a forty dollar product. Like, no, it it is not worth it. I would be better off going to yeah. work for two hours and just buying it. Like, it it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So that always makes me laugh. Cause I see it all the time. They're like, do it for free stuff. It's like, no, no, not at all. No. Nah. Like sometimes yeah. you get cool stuff, which is like a sweet bonus. But really, yeah. you're doing it. I don't know. For, at least for me, the love of the hobby, and I like sharing and creating content, and like creating things i find that part fun yeah yeah and i guess not to not to sound repetitive but um when we do this thank you to all of the the companies that that kind of reach out and engage with the hobbyists out there i think there's a real marketplace for that i think there's a real place for hobbyists connecting to companies because at the end of the day we give them feedback mm -hmm. you know we mm -hmm. tell them hey this is what's working this is what doesn't work 
Um, mm -hmm. Those review videos that you see on YouTube, those companies listen to that. They go, oh, you know what? We're going to upgrade our software because this YouTuber said, mm -hmm. hey, this is a problem. Or we're going to yeah. change the way the hardware works because they've discovered a flaw and now yeah. they've shared it with thousands of people. And hey, we better up our game. Mm -hmm. If it yeah. weren't for content creators sharing those reviews and doing that, yeah. that due diligence, mm -hmm. um, these products won't get any better um, as, mm -hmm. as quickly. I believe. That's true. So That's actually a good point. Yeah, there's a real service that I think a lot of these um, content creators do. And so I think to bash on them for saying like, hey, oh, they're only making this video because they got it for free um, is, is kind of unfair. But at the same time, if you're watching that and you appreciate it, then yeah, go ahead and support them. Yeah, that's true. I On, on that random side note, I actually do seem to end up beta testing lots of stuff, which I think is kind of fun to try out new things and then give them feedback to improve yeah. it. And I think that part is cool. Like I don't really do much content on it, but I do that on the side for random, lots of random products. So that part's fun. Yeah. Uh, I feel on screen comments. I feel like most people like to see failures over success. This has been my experience based on my own channel. People do like to see it, but like it's also it's all a problem. Like the last video, I'm like, okay, here's how you deal with you have flatworms and how to deal with it, right? You know, that's probably going to help a lot of people. And like most people will be like, oh, I don't want to put a video about pests in my tanks having issues. Like, this is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Learn, learn yeah. from it. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, it's great. No, it's pretty good. So, um, how, how do you guys balance the whole sort of um, content creation and aquarium and, and life? You know, um, because for me, it is a chunk of my life that I now dedicate to the world. Yeah, uh, so, so what's it, what's it been like for you guys? Go for it, Lauren. Um, well, I personally, um, I, you know, um, I quite enjoy it. It's a bit of me time. Like, I, I don't know, I find it as a bit of, um, cause I'm a mum, so I've got, um, yeah, I enjoy it cause it's, you know, dedicated time that I get to do something that I love. So, um, for me, you know, doing it on the weekends, um, that's something I really love about it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely trying to find the balance and just not letting it, you know, take over your life as well. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely find that balance um, and just taking it at, at your own pace and what you can, you know, manage, um, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. How about you, Devin? That's fair. Um, yeah, similar. It does definitely sucks up. Probably I'm going to say like two days a week of my time. If you can't live stream through two and a half, because <laughs> here yeah, I'm wow. live stream. But usually, like, there's usually a few hours one day of shooting a video on something, and then you're not shooting, you're thinking about what am I going to do a video on for next week. Mm. And then usually there's a few hours of editing, usually Sunday night for my Monday morning video. So it, it's it's a good chunk of time. You know, yeah. it, and even last time, like a week or two ago, I went camping, and I'm like, oh crap, I'm going to be gone. So then I had to like come up with two videos ahead of time so I could cover that gap. Yeah. Or if I got to go to town That's for work, true. then it's like panic because I'm like, okay, I need to film like three videos so that I don't get buggered because I'm going to be out of work, <laughs> out of town for work for the week, right? So the next yeah. one and the one after because I won't have time to do that. Like it's, <laughs> that. That part can be a little chaos. And like I tried doing two videos a week for a while, but it was like burning me out just with working like full time plus for a day job. Like a video a week's been like a happy medium for me. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, I try to keep it to a video a week. Yep. Um, yeah. That for me seems to be a nice sort of balance. Um, I guess my advice for anyone out there who wants to do this is um, do it in a way where you enjoy the process because yeah. I guess content creation becomes a hobby in itself. Like we yeah. have reef, it is. reef keeping as a hobby, but then content creation itself becomes like a whole nother thing altogether. It's its, its own beast. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm just starting out in that sort of area. And for me, I, I'm not hoping to like, you know, explode across the planet. That's not my goal. My goal is personally just to learn something new, to learn, uh, you know, how to, to share information, how to effectively communicate, mm -hmm. how to share knowledge and record keep and all those sort of things. So um, I find the enjoyment in actually creating that content, even yeah. if it takes a couple of hours of my week. Lauren's right. It is um, my personal me time. Mm -hmm. It's time that I get to sort of zone out. And I tell my wife, you know, hey, wife, I'm just going to spend the next three hours uh, doing this. Thank you for, for preparing a coffee and a, and a snack. And I will I will do this. And then once, once that's over, though, mm -hmm. uh, here's one thing that I, I want to try and sort of negotiate is I need to, that follow-up of a video 
the, all the comments that happen after, mm -hmm. I'm on that for quite a lot because I really yeah. enjoy the discussion that comes out of that. But I guess at some stage, I also have to cut it off and I have to say, all right, comments down, let's, yeah. let's get back to life as well. So if you're thinking about creating um, content and, and YouTube videos, um, establish some healthy boundaries between True. when you're creating content and when you're spending time with your family or your friends or your job uh, mostly as well. That's, that's healthy boundaries is always um, useful so that we don't burn out because when you love what you do, you're going to give all of it. Yeah, but it's true. Unfortunately, when you give all to, to multiple masters, you save a little masters, bit for the rest of life. That's it. You know, you can't be a slave to all the different masters. So you're going you're gonna to be, um, I guess, balanced in that regard. Yep. And yeah. I've, I've learned if your spouse is not to the hobby, you should not talk to them about it 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's so true yep nick yeah. nick where do you think the future of youtube reese is heading more of the same or a new direction probably Ooh. just more of the same i i can't say that i can see any drastic shift coming mm. well, unless unless nick does it himself and yeah nick how do you go for us um right. i don't know how many top tens i can watch yeah i don't know i've never done the top tens like pe they're they're good statistically because people like them but I don't know. Honestly, every one of my videos is just whatever I'm working on that week or whatever project or, you know, I buy something new. Okay, let's create content around it. So mine are very random. Like, I'm bad. I probably should plan ahead and do a ton. But most of mine, I just, whatever I'm tanking that week is what turns into a content for me. That's it. Like, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to offer something different to the community mm -hmm. uh, in terms of my videos. Like, um, you know, I found success with, with canister filter reefing. So is Lauren. Um, I've also, I want to approach different pieces of equipment in different ways. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me is, is kind, of, kind of my niche that I want to cover. Um, I hope on YouTube there's a bit more diversity of content moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe all the other discussions, like for example, the way we just had a discussion on reef keeping and balancing your life. Yep. Um, or, yeah, or for example, reef keeping, what we're doing now, and content creation. I mm -hmm. think there's so many avenues that people can explore. So 100% there's potential out there for content creators to to really be creative more than just like focusing on what's in the box. Literally thinking outside of the box can be something that gives us um, a bit of a, 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 an open discussion. So well, um, maybe we'll go into that in the future. Yeah, the open yeah. discussion is big. And especially you talk about looking at little guys channels. Okay, so to Nick, like five years ago, we were talking about how important bacteria is in reef tanks on live streams. And now, you know, the past year has become like a big topic again, right? Like we were talking about like years <laughs> ago, like way That's back it. when I was a tiny channel. So it's interesting. Yeah. John oh, Vermont yeah. Reefer, $20 super chat. Thank you so much, John. Wow, wait. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you for everything you do. And thank you very much as well. Oh, um, thanks, John. <laughs> much, much appreciated. So, yeah, so like it is true, right? Like there, I don't know. There's so many different angles and facets of the hobby. I think it is kind of like an endless hole of learning and content. So there's definitely good diversity, and I like what you guys are doing in all the canister reefers. You, because I know you came from like this hardcore freshwater background, so you're like, hey, I can use everything freshwater and turn it add salt, and I got a reef tank, right? Yeah. Like you don't need all the reefing stuff, and there's tons of cool ways you can do it, like canisters and like the glass lily pipes and. That aren't very common, that's it. but it does the job, yeah. obviously, because you yeah, have be, beautiful tanks with it. That's it. My, my stuff, um, I also focus on mainly aesthetics as well. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, Never. I want my, my aquariums to, to look good. And, you know, and, and that's that's something that I think needs to happen in the reefing hobby as well. Um, I've seen a lot of dungeon reefs. I've seen a lot of, like, Super Mario reefs with more plumbing than, than like, the final level. <laughs> um, you know, like, it's, it's yeah, I, I, find, I find that there's there's so much scope for mm -hmm. discussion um aquascaping as well something that doesn't get talked about enough in reef keeping mm -hmm. um so that's some of the content that you can look forward to in my channel um as well as of course the the builds and stuff that we have coming up you know we there's always things that we're looking to share uh, i guess you know lauren devon what's your next projects up ahead no idea <laughs> <laughs> well i'm um just recently got my very first sump tank so mm -hmm. i've never ever had a sump before Ooh, fancy. so i'm um, very excited uh, so i've just got that set up um and hopefully going to get that up and running within the next couple of weeks so um yeah i guess for me as well like 
I don't know, people that have stumps might not realise the, you know, dauntingness of like, oh my gosh, how do I plumb this thing? You know, um, how do I put it together? So I'm definitely going to be sharing um, all of that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I find a lot of people are, um, you know, it's quite easy to create something and, you know, use the um, the terms like SBS and stuff like that. And it's easy to forget that there's people out there that are like, what the heck is that? Um, mm -hmm. So yes. I like to try and remind myself that there are people out there that have never you know done anything like you know and it's easy to you know take for granted all the you know abbreviations and stuff like that and yeah <laughs> I, I remind myself of you know when you first begin and what it feels like and stuff what, like that what, so, what is all yeah. this gibberish yeah, yeah there's it's, definitely a place for that yeah. for sure yeah yeah okay nick yeah. i agree with you nick he goes I think reef aesthetics is going to be the next step for it. I already think it is what we're doing now. Like yeah. majority yeah. of the tanks are, you know, pristine rimless and yeah. it is very like pristine looking these days. Um, yes. I, I do think that is definitely a shift that's going there and which is, which is yeah. good. Cause you know, personally I've always been a fan of having the tank in your main living space, right? Not, not in a basement where it's, you never look at it. It's beautiful and inspirational that's that's the way we want to see it yeah uh, one yeah. of the things I, I want to share out there is um, over the next few months um, I'll be probably delving into some more of the advanced discussions as well as a hobbyist and and nothing that's like peer-reviewed you know like nothing like that but it's more so uh, specific trace elements like you know between you and me Devin we're both moonshiners as mm -hmm. well and so I'm, I'm sort of just tracking what each specific trace element is doing uh, you know, and it's it's been an interesting journey. It's been really good. So, you know, they, I think there's a space on YouTube as well for that. You know, to, yeah. to say, hey, what what does dosing vanadium do? Mm -hmm. You know, what does molybdenum do to my system, and what colors does it pull out of my SPS? And and how do I use these particular tools to get the results that I want? Uh, or like certain other products as well. Like, hey, this is um this is a type of food that I've been feeding for a while, and what's that actually doing to my system? And, and coral health and, and fish health and all these things. So uh, there's those sorts of discussions rather than saying like, oh, here's a product and use it. It's like use case scenarios that, that people can really look into. Um, there's definitely those YouTubers out there already that do that, that look into those nitty gritty, um, here's a peer reviewed paper of, of how corals fluoresce. And that's mm -hmm. great, you know, like I think um, Reefman does that. You know, he's, he's a great channel as well, so shout out to him. Um, but oh, yeah, yeah. also there's, yeah, there's the other side of it, which is just our hobbyist experience. And a lot of the stuff yeah. we do isn't peer reviewed. A lot of the stuff that we do is anecdotal, but I think there's real value in that. So mm -hmm. um, I'll be offering a bit more anecdotal experience as to how I achieved a specific result. Well, yeah. if enough people can repeat anecdotal, then it's pretty solid in my mind, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Then it, it's peer reviewed. <laughs> yeah, it's peer anecdotally reviewed. Um, yeah, yeah. But I think that's. Well, realistically, I mean, peer-reviewed stuff is reefs, oceans. We're not going to have it for our reef tanks. I mean, oh, our hobby is anecdotal. <laughs> this worked for me. Yeah. This did not work for me. Okay, this worked for me too. Okay, well, maybe we have hope. Let's find another person. So, I mean, yeah. definitely. And I do I do like the idea of, like, diving into more of these little, like, mini things. And I think, you know, that is kind of, like, the top kind of tier where someone's like, okay, the reef tank is in a happy place. I want to get the extra little bit out of it, right? You know, you're eighty percent there, but you want that extra little ten percent of color and all these little things. But it, it's a fun kind of way to go down. You need to find all these yeah. different avenues to kind of and and they're not going to be popular videos. You know, like no one's going to be like how to how to dose molybdenum into an aquarium. Like people can't even spell it. <laughs> so it's just like at the end of the day, um, I'm going to create that content simply because that information doesn't really exist out there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, it does. I don't feel confident enough in, in sharing um, what's happening behind the scenes. So, you know, as, as that's happening, I'm gathering research. I'm, I'm speaking to other hobbyists. I'm finding out, you know, what's your experiences of dosing lithium into your aquarium? Or what's your experiences of, of finding certain colors and stretching it out? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all of these things are, are sort of niche things that I think can also expand the discussion online. Yeah. So going all the way back, like, you know, 15 minutes ago, What's the direction of YouTube? <laughs> My goodness, unlimited, right? It's unlimited. true. 
Yeah. It's true. And, but I mean, that's how you learn, right? Is like, I like to experiment, you know, like calc slurry, like all these different things I do. I'm constantly experimenting. And if for me, my experiments are, you know, I'm learning something from it then that will turn into something that I want to share. So mm, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Like, uh, Aaron's video on the, um, the calc, uh, no, the, the, the vinegar the, calcium the, reactor. The, yeah. Vinegar <laughs> calcium reactor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. That's like, that's genius, you know, Tons of um, cool stuff. or, or or just like lots of these little tips and tricks that people have up their sleeves that they've been doing for years mm -hmm. that no one else really knows about. Yeah. Uh, share it out there. Share it online. You know, um, I've, I've seen lots of posts anecdotally about specific treatments that might work or mm -hmm. specific yeah. treatments that definitely shouldn't be done and don't work as well. You know, so yeah. um, the, the good yeah. and the bad that exists out there on the forums, there's, there's a space for that on YouTube as well. Um, but it only happens if people do it if mm -hmm. people share it, if people write it up, yeah. um, it, it doesn't just, you know, if it's stuck here in your mind, people, um, doesn't then that, that the doesn't hobby. do the, <laughs> doesn't help the hobby. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you're going to, you're going to be much appreciated as well. If you put it out there, you know, you're going to have detractors as well, but I'd say 99% of the people out there appreciate your knowledge. So, so definitely get it out there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and so all this stuff is what helps advance the hobby. Right. So, I don't know. I think the more people that share their experience, to share what works, share what doesn't work is the better because they're all kind of learning lessons and going to help other people, your, yourself and others, improve it. And by sharing it, you're also potentially being, okay, this didn't work, but someone else might watch it and be like, oh, why don't you just tweak this one thing and then it should work because it'll work for me, right? So you yeah. learn a lot both ways. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think a and lot of experience, like even for yourself, Mikey, you know, you've been – uh, professional aquascaper, you know, bringing that sort of experience and knowledge. <laughs> well, yeah, like, you know, competing in competitions, like a lot of us have never done that sort of thing before and, you know, don't even know where to begin with aquascaping and stuff like that. So it's like really awesome that there is that platform where, you know, people can bring that, you know, uh, <laughs> other side that they might not normally, yeah. you know, be. And for yourself, Devin, all your DIY stuff, like, it's just Likewise. really, really cool. Yeah, it's mm. awesome that, um, yeah, that there is that platform for people with such different knowledge and experience to bring it out, you know, just to give to the community. So I love it, yeah. Yeah, speaking yeah. of sharing knowledge, Taylor King, if anyone has any secret tips for fermented snails, please help a brother out. Um, oh, I did. You go first. I got one. <laughs> okay. I believe it was Mike Paletta when he was on my live stream that said this. I think that's what it was. But that's I think, the tip. <laughs> yeah, I think he used coral snow or like, the, or like some kind of a chalk, which is basic coral it's snow. It's calcium carbonate powder. Yeah, calcium. Thank you, calcium carbonate powder. Basically, dose a bunch of that to his tank, and apparently that helped kill off a bunch of his vermidian snails. And I'm fairly certain there might be more to it, so maybe go watch the video. I'm paraphrasing of bits of memory knowledge, but yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty much it, Taylor. Um, you you get about a, a tablespoon of calcium carbonate powder or a teaspoon of it, and you stir it up into a solution. It doesn't really dissolve because it's a solid, um, but what happens is it, it floods the whole tank with this dust and the, the vermited snails consume it, um, but because it's not necessarily a food for them, they kind of just choke out on it eventually kind of wither away or it clogs their their internals who knows uh, again not peer reviewed <laughs> it's it's just a discussion that we've anecdotally seen so um and there's lots of other side benefits to that i think that's a whole video in itself and we'll probably um, make a video on that in the future as well the, the benefits of um calcium carbonate dosing as as yeah there's there's a lot to it <laughs> yep yeah it also works as like a flocculant and helps clear your mm -hmm. water. I mean, so there you go. Clears water, um, you know, makes your pH stabilized for, for a moment. If you've ever seen a pH dip, um, yeah, it does a lot of things, cleans up stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I want to sort of put out there as well is in, in the comments section, if you know a YouTube channel that just deserves a little bit of like cred or a little bit of um, a shout out, just, just type it in there for others to see as well because... I'm slowly starting to find these little YouTube channels that exist uh, only because I'm there more often now. I start, like it's not just the big players, you know. It's not just the people with 10k plus subs. Um, there's yeah. there's all these tiny little channels out there that exist. So if you're if you're one of them, if you have a channel, place it in the comment section below or place it on the chat on the side. If you've been watching a video um, from a channel, place it there on the side as well. Just give them a shout out as well, and let's see if we can sort of subscribe to them and get them involved as well. Sounds good. 
And on that same note, I do have both of your guys' channels linked in the comment or the description box. So I know for whoever's going to be hunting for you guys later to where they can find, just check the description and they're in there. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do we got? What? How long till you have to go to work? I know it's like super well, early. Oh, well, I've got to go to work in a roughly around about 10-ish minutes. So. <laughs> All right. Okay, perfect. Um, I feel like I had something else good I wanted to dig into, but I completely forgot what it was. Now. No, go ahead. Dig into it. No, I got to uh, figure out what it was. We still got some time. <laughs> <laughs> I got so sidetracked. Uh, what else you guys got? If there's any other questions in the chat again, let us know. Me, me, yeah, me. I guess opening it up to the, the, the crowd as well. You know, if you've got any questions for us, just throw it out there and 100% we'll, we'll answer it for you. And if you try that powder to get rid of your vermited snails and it works, also want to know about that later. Expand yeah. the yeah. anecdotal pool. That's it. That's it. Yeah. It, it. Honestly, it does no harm. Um, you know, I, it's it's an actual product that exists out there. You can mm -hmm. get it in terms of um, coral snow, um, aquifers build, I believe as well is is a really good one. So all of these, um, there's there's also there's other local companies that do it, some sort of like reef milk thing as well. So, you know, it's it's a proven thing that that actually works. Um, yeah, definitely. For for different reasons, as for vermitids, I'm not quite sure yeah. until we get more proof. Bumblebee snails. That's another one I have heard a bazillion times. And I have yes. a bumblebee snail, and I don't have a lot of vermin snails, so that could be some more anecdotal <laughs> for you right there. Um, is that powder dangerous to Christmas tree worms? I don't know. I've never had a Christmas tree worm. Yeah. Um, my, my feather worms don't seem to mind it. You know, yeah. those bigger feather star worms, that they're still alive and kicking. and bloop, bloop. So <laughs> mm -hmm. maybe not. No, yeah. How does your spouse deal with your reef addiction? That's a good question. Cool. <laughs> that could be a whole live stream on that question alone. I, I don't want to talk. <laughs> you can't talk. You're like, don't ruin my happy place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that could be a fun stream topic I, one night. My my spouse, um, I'll tell him things about the tank and he'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then we'd have friends come over and he's just like, oh, yeah. Then there's the symbiotic relationship between them. It's like, <laughs> cracking out everything that I've told him. And so it's like, yeah. Everything. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, nice. Um, whenever I set up a new tank, my wife goes to me, bye bye, see you in six months. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Um, no, it's, it's, it's fine. We, we have uh, genuine conversations about, hey, this, this is going to be a bit of a commitment. You know, we, it's, it's almost like nursing. Uh, it is. You, you, you're creating a whole new environment. So there's going to be some time and care put into that. And that obviously um, is something that needs to be negotiated. I mean, you could go ahead and do it, but at what cost? Yeah. You know, at what cost? So, um, obviously, for me, um, I'm, I'm a little bit more responsible with um, at least trying to make sure that everyone's happy. Uh, so, how does my spouse deal with it? And she has her own hobbies as well. She does. She, yeah. she loves her, her sort of hobbies. And I guess we, we have our own nice little happy places that exist. That's fair. <laughs> okay, Tracy, quick shout out. Awesome live stream. Good information. Smash the like button. Subscribe. Thank you so much, Tracy. And Jeff was asking most satisfying moment or achievement as a hobbyist. Ooh, what you got? Um, I, I mean, obviously ranking um, in a winning place in International Aquatic Plants Layout Contest, which is happening this weekend, mind you, viewers. So that's the ADA yeah. IAPLC. Um, 2,000 aquascapers across the world compete for the top grand prize of Ooh. ten thousand, I think it's like ten thousand USD ish. So mm -hmm. it's 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 the big bucks out there. Obviously, me um, placing not in that sort of one, two, three section podium position, but just representing Australia. That's cool. And and, uh, and being being a winner for Australia has been um, yeah. a, a proud moment in my and, and doing that twice as well. Nice. Uh, so that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's that's been fun. Um, I I believe this year there since I didn't enter the competition, that's my unfinished competition scape it's blurred because um, it's unfinished <laughs> yeah it's my background yeah, yeah. um it's it, there's going to be a new reigning champion in australia i have a good feeling that one of my mates Rocket. is going to take out the crown i won't yeah. i'll knock on wood for him as well um, but i hope he's going to do some some really awesome stuff that's awesome well congrats and that's wicked well thank awesome. you yeah all right lauren <laughs> what's been your achievement or like yeah, moment i don't know I know this sounds really, yeah, basic, but I, just even having a saltwater tank, 
Mm -hmm. I felt like I could never actually do that or yeah achieve that so being able to have a saltwater tank successfully is probably yeah the biggest thing for me um and has been the most rewarding and exciting thing so yeah I think that I know that's super basic but that's awesome honestly, though that's awesome yeah. that's great it's yeah, what about yeah. You? um hobby wise like just like see the youtube channel grow has been really awesome because it's something i just kind of did for fun and just made yeah. myself commit to it and just seeing it grow is pretty cool um being a speaker at some events has been super cool something i never yeah. would have imagined i thought i'd do because i remember like back in high school like i hated talking in front of the class and you know and now i was like on stage speaking in front of like 300 people like that was kind of crazy to do s some of those things which i never like who knew a youtube channel would take you there so i think stuff like that has been really awesome to do it but yeah, yeah i don't know it's fun just the yeah. I guess obsessive it takes an life journey. Perspective. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, like I'm looking at both of you and I, I really look up to both of you in terms of what you've achieved. You know, like Lauren, Devin, your, your channels have, have a, a good following, a good community behind them. Uh, but you take a piece of your life and you share it with the world. And I think um, that's that's an achievement in itself. Um, I'm, I'm personally very proud of like the, the, the content creators that exist out there. You know, I'll... I'll share them because I think it's it's great. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, I really I, I do appreciate what you're doing. Uh, that's yeah. that's the big thing as well. So you should be proud of that. I think that's a great achievement. Is just to <laughs> to have this channel. You know, um, that's that's like it's nothing little. You know, it's not little. Um, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like, be proud of your content and what you put out there. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, feel feel good moment when when like friends or family friends come over and they just want to like stare at your tank and talk about it you're like yeah, yeah. <laughs> i set up like a specified seating area in front of my tank so that Love friends it. come over we have a platter right there so i don't miss out on it <laughs> the, uh, the tank <laughs> nice That's solid strategy you're like here is your chair yeah. and your beverage perfectly positioned to view yeah. my tank <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Behold my creation. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah. That, that, that part's enjoy fun. It. You enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're going to like it. But yeah, that yeah. used to always make me crack because I always got in heck for talking about like the retank too much. And then like, you know, like the way friends go or something and they're all talking about it. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those little feel good victories, eh? Oh, yeah. That's it. That's it. When you can steal your spouse's friends and, and have a chat to them <laughs> about the conversation on reaping, you, you know, you're onto something good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love it. Okay. I know you guys both have to go to work in like less than 10 minutes. So I think we should probably call her for today. Thank you for waking yes. up at like 630 in the morning because I know time <laughs> zones and I appreciate okay. you guys coming on. It was fun. Uh, thank you. Yeah. It's It's been okay. great. Um, thanks to all the people for joining us as well. Yeah. You know, you you've, uh, you make this, this live stream a really happy place for all three of us. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, keep joining those live streams and discussing and commenting. No, definitely. And be Michael Lawrence, both their channels are linked in the description if you guys want to check them out later. Tracy, John, Nick, Jeff, Jay's World, Taylor King, Rob, thank you guys. Oh, great bearded reef, Chili Willy, thank you guys so much for the super chat as well. Really appreciate it. And yeah, hopefully, guys, you enjoyed it a little bit different tonight, but it was a lot of fun. And thanks again, guys, for coming on.